So Konami brought me and C-Reacts to Japan back in February for the quarter century celebration for Yu-Gi-Oh! And one of the main things we got to experience was Yu-Gi-Oh! VR. And by the way, this works amazing. I just realized I hadn't made a video about this or talked about it, but I grabbed this footage from, from Konami and I wanted to give you my, I guess my overall thoughts on the actual thing. Cause the thing is, the, the gameplay you might have seen in the screenshots did not do it justice for how amazing this thing is. Let's like backtrack for a second. You remember when Battle City was happening? We were watching Yugi and Kaiba dueling with their duel discs. One of the most desired things we as Yu-Gi-Oh fans have always wanted from that day were hologram duels. Now, obviously, technology is not quite there yet. But this is probably the closest thing to it. I'm not even kidding. So I'm going to give you like a full breakdown of what I saw. Now, this is a spectator view. This is very important. This is not the view that you see when you're inside the world. This character right there, that's me standing there when I'm actually in the world. But from the spectator view, I guess they don't show you like the first person FPS view of the world that's happening. So what happens here is this is the first time you like hop into the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! VR. But from understanding, this is a test. They want to see if it's possible to make Yu-Gi-Oh! VR work. And I guess the whole pur purpose of this is to show you the process of uh, what it's like to summon, to attack, and just have like a small dual interaction that could lead to a bigger game. Now, I don't know what Konami has planned with this. They didn't tell me anything, but it seems like they want to pursue Yu-Gi-Oh! VR at some point and give us the feeling of dueling with our dual discs. And it was, I'm telling you, this is the most coolest thing I've ever seen in my world, uh, in, in, in the world. And I hate VR. I want that to be clear. I hate anything VR related just because every time I play VR games, I get nauseous. I feel like it's it's a gimmick that just kind of gets whatever over the you know, course of like a couple hours or something like that. And normally I'm not a big fan of VR. This, something about this was just different. I didn't get dizzy when I played. It was just cool interacting with, you know, Dark Magician Girl and Dark Magician, seeing blue eyes pop up. And I'm gonna go through all this as it happens. It's not like a reaction, but it's kind of like a reaction. So the very first thing it asks you is to draw. So you draw a draw field spell, which is Necro Valley. And I guess the whole purpose of this is to show you if you were to play a field spell, what would happen to the world around you. So the second you activate it, I think the there was no translation. So I think they're telling me to play the field spell. But the second you play this, it's so cool. It changes the field around. So I, I, I would like to assume that if we were to play Yu-Gi-Oh! VR in the future, this is something that they would pursue. Where if you play stuff like Wasteland, Mountain, or in this case, Necro Valley, some kind of field spell, the cashier field spells, it would change the environment around you. And I think that's amazing. How well that would work? I, it also kind of varies with how your opponent is playing field spells as well. Would they do a situation where like it's half and half or like would it change if one person placed or writing it? I have no idea. But the point of this was it was so cool. And again, at this point, you're looking around everywhere. You are in the Necro Valley tombs. It's amazing. And again, this is just a spectator view. You don't see like the motion of being inside it. And th th this is the reason why I also want to make this video is because like once you're inside it, like you, you like, you know, you can like, move. You're there. I can't emphasize that enough. You're literally at the tombs. So I think this is the part where uh, they kind of like told a story with the demo. They're basically trying to be like, oh, we sense a monster. So what's going to happen here in a couple seconds is uh, Sagi the Dark Clown is going to pop out and attack you. And then this is how they basically talk about, uh, or not talk about, they, they try to put you in the world of, I guess, dueling. So in this case, it'll give you an option to summon a monster to fight Sagi back, which we'll get to there in a second. Uh, I don't know if they would do like a story-based thing where it's its own game. I think the whole point of this, again, this is just me completely speculating and theorizing. I think the whole point here is to just show what it would be like to be in a world. So here, we got to draw our first card. It's going to be Dark Magician Girl here in a second. And also being able to just like hold this was just so cool. Again, you don't get to see that in this, but in the actual game that I played, you had the, the card like in your hand. You, could, you were able to like move it around and stuff like that. So it asks you to summon it. And this is so cool because she's like right above you. So we get the animation that you get from the Spectre view, like I said, she pops out. Similar to what we saw in games like Duel Links, it's very animated, it looks really beautiful. But in the actual game, she's like right there, and you're just like, whoa, you can move around and everything. And the cool thing is she's interacting with you too, which is kind of sick. So I think this is the part where they're sensing that there's going to be a monster popping up. And what I really like about this is this gave me the same feelings that we saw in Yu-Gi-Oh! First of all, you see how she gets annoyed with Kaiba? Because like Kaiba was supposed to be like this like annoying character in, in that universe it's like oh, he's like a jerk type of thing um but the whole time dark magician girl is there next to you she's like checking in on you she's like what do we do are you okay 
in like a protective way. It reminded me of, of literally how it was in anime. You know, when Yugi would be figuring out his place, he has his uh, cards in his hand, and you have, you know, Dark Magician, um, Dark Magician Girl, and all the other cards he placed next to him doing that. So at this point, Sagi pops out. I don't know what Sagi thinks he's going to do, but it ain't going to be winning. And this is to demonstrate what an attack would look like. Again, you watch this from FPS view. This is not what it looked like inside it. <laughs> The way the guy was just standing there, that was me in the actual uh, gameplay. And you see her in front of you fly up and zap Sagi into non-existence. And that was so cool. I wish I could play this again. And then, of course, you get a little celebration and stuff like that. And this is when a warning pops up. Again, she checks in on you a lot. That interaction is so cool to me because it opens up so much uh, animation potential in the future with how they would handle this game. I don't know how they're going to actually do this. I feel like the best way to release this in the future would be like a hard reset starting in like the early days and then going into the future kind of like how they did with Duel Links. it's probably the best way to do it because like you'll have to reanimate every single character possible but at this point i believe they're talking about how they sense a monster and uh they were trying to get you to pull out of the vr because it's getting dangerous but kind was like no stay in there so this is the part where blue eye shows up and by the way blue eyes white dragon was massive when i say she was just flying above you huge <laughs> it actually felt like a threat <laughs> it's funny uh, uh both me and c react actually recorded our initial reactions playing it and we both were just like it's like looking up a giant titan above you you know not knowing what's about to happen again you can't this video doesn't do any justice because from the spectator view it just looks like a regular duel but in the actual game you, you, you're looking up you see this massive dragon floating above you you can kind of tell from here so I believe right here, the the story they're going with is is too dangerous for the subject to be in the game, and uh, I think they're telling him to pull you out of the game. And Cap like, "No, keep the test going." It's really cool. Obviously, Dark Magician Girl is not going to do anything about this, but this was the coolest moment of the actual event because what happens is, is Blue Eyes prepares to attack Dark Magician Girl. As you know, three thousand attack, two thousand attack. It's uh, <laughs> one's about to get obliterated, and at this point. Blue Eyes fires the beam, and both me and Dion literally, like, blocked when that happened, just because it was, like, a natural reaction. And then, you're still alive. And this part was so cool, because I'm like, what is happening? And I, at that point, Dion was already done with his uh, demo in the, ba in the background. I got here. Dion, Dion, look to your left, look to your left. And when I look to my left, it's Dark Magician standing there. Now, again, you can't tell here, because you don't get the movement in the actual tech demo. But if you look to your left, Dark Magician is standing there, and he's just like... I got you, bro. I assume that's spellbinding circle. Look at oh, that! <laughs> so cool. Impossible. Unless he is the chosen one. I think this is supposed to be like uh, their way of saying like, oh, this was um, the chosen one being inside here, and Dark Magician showing up to protect you from blue eyes it makes you like the Pharaoh type, like the spirit of Pharaohs inside you. When I tell you this is the coolest thing I've ever played in the last couple years, it's up there. And the, the part that hurts to me the most is knowing that we probably will not see this for a very long time. But for love of God, Konami, I know you're going to see this, Konami. We want this. I don't know how it's going to work, but this demo is, is perfectly shaping up for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, give us the ability to play the way we watched the anime growing up. We don't have uh, holograms yet. But this is the next best thing. Now, something else I'd like to point out. This is not a uh, me telling you you should get your VR headsets right now. By the time this even comes out, there'll probably be a better way to do it. I think that's also another issue that they'll probably have to figure out for themselves. Like, how do you make this accessible for everybody? And this is unfortunately the end when Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl both leave. But it's the way they interact with you that was so cool. Again, when, when Blue Eyes fired the, the uh, burst stream of destruction, or white lightning, you're like, what happened? Why am I still alive? Dion, look, Dion, look to your left from, from Dion. I look to my left, and he just stand there. I got you. It was so, oh, I'm so geeky thinking about that. Konami, again, thank you for bringing me out to the quarter century celebration in Japan. If you ever do something again like that in the future, <laughs> the answer is yes, I am down. <laughs> and hey, if we do, if you do more stuff around VR, potentially if you want to, you know, test, I volunteer as tribute. I will fly out myself to play the future of this because this right here is the way to experience Yu-Gi-Oh that we've all wanted at some point.
Again, the, the, I, I can't state enough state enough times how this gameplay doesn't do it any justice because it's from a spectator view. But when you're in a pilot seat, watching Kaba talk to you, interacting with, with the characters, the monsters, it's such a different perspective than, you know, just seeing this as like, oh, this is just another little gimmick that they're going to release and be done with. This is it. Solid vision. It's a, it, you have a solid vision for this idea. <sighs> Eventually, unfortunately. So yeah. So I want to make make this quick video to kind of like go over this gameplay. Uh, thank you for Konami for sending me this footage as well. And hopefully we can have another update about this a lot sooner than later. But at the same time, I want them to take their time with this. Because this right here it could be the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! Along with the other ways that we have to play. And I think if they do also release this and do it like... Uh, in bursts where they do like the early days first into the future. It's also a nice way to bring a lot of people who grew up with the series back as well. But yeah. Other than that, if you have any questions, let me know down below. Uh, like I said, I got to experience this. You can also ask Dion as well, C Reacts. And uh, we will do our best to basically gas this up because this was this was it. <laughs> this was it. That said, if you have any questions, let me know down below. And I guess I'll see you guys uh, in the next video as well as the comments because I'm sure there's a lot of questions about this. And we'll keep the fun going in the future. Thank you guys for watching. Two videos up on the screen. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.